Which reminds me too, I about a year ago, I was at Barber Motorsports Park and I walk upstairs and there was freaking Pierre Terreblanche. And Pierre Terreblanche is the guy who designed the 999, the Multistrada. He worked for, I think it was Kajiva. He did like the, or yeah, the, the, the Elephant and the Navigator, like some of my, the Grand Canyon, that's what it was, the Kajiva Grand Canyon, one of my mm-hmm. favorite motors. Anyway, and I'm like, freaking Pierre Terreblanche. I mean, in right? terms of motorcycle designers, that's royalty. Yeah, right? he's, like he's yeah. Well, and not many. You don't really know too many motorcycle designers. He was very polarizing. He worked for Ducati. He, you know, we went from the nine sixteen to the nine nine nine, and that really bothered a lot of people because it was so different. But it had some really genius ideas, especially at the time. Like, he did the nine nine nine, right? Yeah, he did the nine nine nine. I've always liked that bike. Yeah, but he was doing the stack headlights yeah, when we were yeah. used to the cat eyes, and now we're all back to cat eyes. But he. Uh, like the rear swing arm, when you typically on a normal swing arm, swing arms at an angle, right? You adjust your chain length, you're changing your ride height. And so you're, again, everything's connected. So something as, as benign as changing your gearing for a racetrack could change your geometry to whatever. And he's like, no, 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 we'll just make it hor- horizontal. Anyway. Oh, um, the dropouts, the, the axle dropouts. Yeah, the axle flat. were, I were level with the ground. I the swing this. arm had this weird shape to it so that the it could be level. Um, so you didn't change your ride height when you changed your your yep. your uh, gearing. So I'm there hanging out with them, or I, like I see them and I just walk up to them and I'm like, "Hey, uh, I owned one of the first Multistradas. I loved it. I I know your some of your designs are. I think they're fantastic. I think like and just kind of like gushed on him for a minute. And he goes, "Oh, well, here, let me show you something that I'm working on." And so he takes me around, and he has this like mock-up of a motorcycle that still looks very much like a 999. I will put a photo of it. I have photos of this thing. He let me take pictures of it. And uh, it's this weird-looking thing, and it has this like tube, go- tube going from the front to the back. And he goes, what do you suppose that is? Ironically, a week earlier, you were talking to me about a thing called Meredith Effect. So oh. <laughs> he shows me, he, so Meredith effect is, and you explain what Meredith effect is and I'll go on with the story. Oh, on the fly. Okay. Let me try to remember really quick. Um, if I butcher this a little, just realize I don't have Google in front of me like you do. <laughs> so, um, the Meredith effect basically is, uh, it was used on the P51 Mustangs as air basically passed through the coolant system. It heat it heats up the air very quickly, like the radiator system, and it creates sort of a thrust effect. So much so that the P-51 relied on this thrust effect from the Meredith, the, the Meredith effect, the thrust from it, to actually help propel the, the aircraft forward. Um, so that was probably the most famous use case of the Meredith effect is the P-51 Mustang. But it's it applies everywhere. It actually happens all the time. We just don't ever talk about it. Right. And you brought it up to me because you had read an article that Aprilia was playing with it. Um, for their next version of the MotoGP yeah. bikes. They were very open that they were playing with the idea of Meredith Effect. There's even, um, I think Cycle World had an article where they had some of the schematic drawings of what Aprilia was playing with. So like Meredith Effect is fresh in my mind. And he goes, what do you suppose that is? And I go, Meredith Effect. And his eyes got really big. <laughs> and he's like, yes. And he started showing me all the crazy things that he was doing on this motorcycle. And a lot of them are really clever. The the position of the fuel tank, the traditional fuel tank, was adjustable. The the seat was all movable and adjustable. The rear sets were movable and adjustable. And he was saying, he's a bicycle guy. You and I are both sure, bicycle yeah, yeah, guys. Yeah. And he goes, I go buy a bicycle guy for my size. And I adjust the seat and the, the handlebars to my position. He goes, why don't motorcycles do this? And point. so it was all kind of baked into it. But then to the front end, it had kind of this not a traditional front end. It looked similar to a bicycle fork. And he's like, he was talking about it. And I was like, all right, so what's going on here? And he goes, yeah, he goes, tell a lever, this is what he says, tell a lever has a lot of great advantages, except it's not good for the the trail to get longer when you go to the brakes. Motorcyclists want the trail to decrease because that's a, a function of feel and how the motorcycle wants to change direction. So he devised this crazy cool non-traditional front end that has all the advantages of tail lever, right? By separating steering inputs and suspension inputs, but still dives under braking to the point where it reduces. We, it was just this like fantastic conversation with him showing me all of these crazy ideas that Barber is basically put them on make stuff for us, right? Like, here's your like own little design studio. You can sit here and you can design whatever you want and we're going to subsidize your design thing. And it was 
it was an amazing conversation. Huh. And to the video I'm making next week, he also he brought up he 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 said, you know, tradition is is killing this sport. He he goes, look at who's buying motorcycles right now. He goes, it's old farts. It's like you and me, and you know, we wanted the motorcycle that we couldn't have when we were a kid, and that's like this whole rash of of retro things. He goes, you're like the Dax is sitting right behind <laughs> us, which I was super excited about. Yeah, yeah. You know, because it was a bike I wanted as a this kid. This one's for you. Yeah. But he basically said, too, we're completely ignoring the future of the sport by being so obsessed with the bike I had as a kid that yeah. we're, we're, and he's very forward thinking. A lot of his, his ideas are very controversial. Not all of them worked, but I think to the point, I was, it was such an exciting conversation because to have someone who's so willing to step out of the box. And then he made another point. He's like, all these ideas that you think that are, that I thought I came up with them. And he goes, I'll be going through some like historic motorcycle book. And some guy came up with this in the thirties. Yep. And I'm just, you know, we just circled back to the same way to try to solve the same problem. Very cool conversation.